The fourth part of Section C on Waves is on sound. Now, um, if we look at sound, there are... Sound's quite a straightforward topic. We look at the basic properties of sound waves, pitch and frequency, echo sounding, audible range, and loudness, pitch and frequency graphically. Now, the basic properties of sound waves, we've discussed earlier on the Section 1 in Waves. We also talked about frequency measured in hertz, the number of complete waves per second. Now, the basic properties of sound waves, so sound um, requires a medium to travel through, so it can't travel through a vacuum, it can't travel through space. So sound waves are longitudinal waves and they require a medium to travel through because the particles move closer together as the sound wave progresses through the medium. Now, when we look at sound waves, we've got high pitches, high frequencies, so high pitch is a high frequency. So if you think about it on a graph, if we think about it, we need to know the basics. So if we were to consider somebody talking, now their voice might give a trace like this, and this axis here is distance, now then, this wave here, this green wave, might be a sound wave, now if the sound was louder, but exactly the same pitch or the same frequency, if it was louder but the same, so you've turned the stereo up louder but the pitch of the sound is exactly the same, then what we would find is all we would get is a larger amplitude. So if the volume was higher the amplitude would be greater but we can see the wavelength is exactly the same. That's because the pitch is exactly the same. Now if we were going to go to a higher pitch and a higher pitch would give us more cycles per second. The frequency would be higher. There'd be more waves in a second. So a higher pitch would give us a wave that's up like this. Where we've got far more waves per second. A low pitch, a deeper sound, would be fewer waves. In a given time period. And if we look at this particular wave, the red wave, we can see that the pitch of this, or the frequency of it, is roughly half that of the green one, but the volume is the same. So this, the sounds are equally loud, however the green one has a higher frequency or a higher pitch than the red one, which is a deeper, lower sound. Okay. Before I go on to um, echo sounding, I just want to talk about the audible range. So humans can hear vibrations from 20 to 20,000 hertz. So if something vibrates 20 times per second, that's the lowest, deepest sound that a human can hear. Humans can hear right up to 20,000 hertz. Now you will have done experiments in class to see that as, as the frequency of a sound wave has increased, the old teachers amongst us our sound disappears around 17,000 Hz, whereas students' sound doesn't drop off till 20,000 Hz. So students can hear frequencies higher than adults as adults' ears deteriorate. But ch even children can't hear 30,000, 40,000 Hz, which some animals can. Okay, so some animals can hear, some animals can hear right up to 120,000 Hz. Now, the most complex question on sound would be regard, regarding echo sounding because what we're doing is we're incorporating speed equals distance over time and the, the idea of sound travelling through a medium. So for example, if we were to consider a ship using echolocation to find something on the seabed or to find how deep the seabed is. Now, 
The speed of sound in water is roughly a thousand meters per second. So the speed of sound in water, V, equals 1,000 meters every second. Because the particles in water are closer together than they are in air, which is a gas, the speed is higher than it is in air. In air, sound travels between 300, 330 meters per second. But in water, it's 1,000 meters per second. And in things like steel, it's several thousand meters per second because the particles are closer together. Now in echolocation, if we have a ship, now a ship might create a sound wave. And the sound wave would pass through the water and it would hit the object, or hit the bottom, and it would reflect back again. And this reflected sound wave could be picked up by the ship. And this could be used to determine the depth of the water. So it makes a sound, it waits for the echo, and by knowing the speed of sound in water and how long it takes to return, they can work out the depth of the object or the depth of the ocean floor. Now, this is really quite straightforward. So if, for example, the sound wave took three seconds to return, so if our time period was three seconds, now, students find this quite straightforward because they would say speed equals distance divided by time. So distance equals speed times time. So distance equals 1,000 times 3, which equals 3,000 meters. Now, this answer is not correct, okay, because students typically will do this because they forget that the sound wave travelled there and back again. And it's important to remember the total distance travelled by the sound wave may have been 3,000 metres, but the depth of this, because it went there and back, is 3,000 divided by 2, which is 1,500 metres. So it's important when you're given a question if it involves a sound echolocation with a sound wave being reflected that you remember at the end to halve it. Okay, and always, always, always remember keep everything in meters and everything in seconds in all these type of calculations.